New movements. During the 1800s, we had lots of these. From women's suffrage to immigration, the world was changed in this time period. The Second Great Awakening was the first movement. It was an immense surge in Christianity. It was led by Charles Grand Grandison fin Finney. He, after a religious epiphany, turned from a lawyer to a preacher. After becoming a preacher, he would hold revivals in which people would gather to pray for days. The effect the Second Great Awakening had on the United States of America was it gave us morals. Suddenly, we believed that things like slavery, alcohol, and violence weren't good. Next, we have the abolitionist movement. The abolitionists believed that we should end slavery, although they didn't all believe that blacks and whites were equal. Some actually believed that we should send them to Africa to avoid enslaving them. The starters of this movement were the Quakers. No, not the O brand, but the religious group. William Garrison, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman were some of the leaders of this movement. William Garrison made The Liberator, which was a newspaper portrayed that portrayed the abolitionist ideals. He also established the American Anti-Slavery Society. Most members believed in an immediate emancipation and equality for African Americans. Frederick Douglass escaped from slavery when he was just 20 years old. As a little boy, he secretly learned to read and write as it was, for, as it was forbidden for slaves to do such things. As he grew older, he realized that he was an advanced speaker. He joined the abolitionists so he could stand for the cause he so dearly believed in. He became a speaker for them and traveled all around. Sojourner Truth was also a public speaker for the abolitionists. She was also active in the women's rights movement and the American Anti-Slavery Society. Harriet Tubman was a conductor in the Underground Railroad. That was an organization that would help slaves escape from plantations. They would normally travel by lantern light in the dead of night. The stars were among some of the only things that gave them hope in their journeys north. The overall effect that the abolitionists had on the U.S. was it changed the behavior towards slavery and made people want to second think if slavery was okay. Women's Rights movement, Movements this was the beginning of the movement that believed that men and women should be treated as equals. Some of the very first leaders in the women's rights movements were the Grimke sisters. They wrote a pamphlet called Letters on the Equality of the Sexes and the Condition of Women. In this pamphlet, there was a quote that says, I ask no favors for my sex. All I ask is our brethren. All I ask our brethren is that they will take their feet off from off our necks and permit us to stand upright on the ground which God has designed for us to occupy. The leaders of the women's rights movement were Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Angelina and Sarah Grimke, Susan B. Anthony, Lucy Stone, and Lucretia Mott. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott created the first women's convention in 1848 after being enraged that women were not allowed to participate in the abolitionist conventions. At this convention, named Seneca Falls Convention, they made a document called the Declaration of Sentiments. This explained that this, this explained the social injustice towards women and the social justice that they wanted. Susan B. Anthony was a large supporter of the suffrage for women, meaning the right to vote. She also believed that women should get equal pay for the same amount of work ethic as men, and that women should be able to do tra traditionally male jobs such as ministering or being a lawyer. She actually tried to go and vote, but ended up getting arrested for it. Lucy Stone was a spokesperson for the American Anti-Slavery Society. She was present in the early days of the women's rights movements as a gifted speaker. She was called by Elizabeth Cady Stanton, one, the one that really stirred the nation's heart on the subjects of women's, women's wrongs. The, the effect this had on today's United States was it gave the women the right to vote. Temperance Movement 
This was the idea that people should use self-discipline to stop drinking liquor. The leader of the temperance movement was Neil Dow. He was also known as the father of prohibition. He was a Quaker. This movement created the prohibition later on. Immigration. During this time, there was a surge of people that immigrated to the United States. There was an addition of 4 million people to the United States. The main countries that immigrated were Germany, Ireland, and China. These people would work as farmers or lay down railroad to make it in the U.S. Ireland was the majority of people. This was due to the potato famine famine in their land that caused many to die. These immigrants normally earned low wages, which caused them to live in poor housing. However, not everyone liked these immigrants. The group of people who were the group of people who were anti-immigration were called na- nativists. In 1849, the nativists formed a political party called the Know Nothing Party. They wanted to keep immigrants and Catholics out of office. They were mostly Protestant who opposed the Catholic religion that immigrants had brought over. They also managed to create a law saying that immigrants had to live in the U.S. 21 years before being able to become a citizen. The impact that this had was it created an influx of people and they are a lot of our ancestors. Transcendentalism was a movement in the mid-1800s. This was a belief that people could rise above material things in life. The leaders of this were Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. They were both authors who believed in self-reliance. Some transcendentalists created utopian communities. They tried to form perfect societies. The two most popular of these communities were Brook Farm and Oneida. Eventually, these communities fell. Romanticism was the inspiration that artists had during the transcendentalist movement. Not actual romance as we think of it today. This caused many people to make things like art, poetry, paintings, books, etc. This also caused a great increase in culture of the U.S. and helped give us our own culture. The prison reform was a movement where people believed that not everyone should go to jail. They used to throw the mentally ill, runaways, and orphans in jail just because they had nowhere else to put them. Dorothea Dix saw this as a problem, so she went to her state legislator to input things such as asylums in place. They also recognized that children should not be given the same sentence as adults, so they created juvenile delinquent centers for children. The education reform was when people started to realize that they Need, that there needed to be a change in public schooling. This was also where the common school movement took place. This was the belief that all children should be taught in one common place regardless of their background. Horace Mann was the leader of this movement. He was the first secretary of education and began the first school for teachers. That way they could be, tra- they could be trained to properly educate the students. He also lengthened the school year so students had more time to learn. These were the new movements of the 19th century.